I was having a bath this morning. I have a bath once a month, whether I need it or not. And I was thinking about viewing figures on these videos. I mean, they'd be consistently falling, apart from one. And that was about technology and that rocket. Sorry, can you hear the background noise? It's my next door neighbour. He's got one of those garden leaf blowers. And you can use it to either blow his leaves onto my garden or switch it to suction mode, suck up the leaves and then dump them over the fence. Anyway, that's what I'm going to do in the future. I'm going to talk about technology. Now, actually, there's a subsea equivalent to a garden leaf blower. So let me tell you about that and then wait for an amazing video at the end. The subsea version of the leaf blower is called a flow excavator. It's designed to remove material from the sea floor. So pipeline or cable might necessitate deburial in order to carry out inspection or even a full repair. Uh, accumulated cut drill cuttings can demand removal or UXO clearance or archaeologists sometimes use them to blow the sand or to remove sand layers over a target. And the go-to tool for this is the excavation dredger. They come in a variety of sizes from 3 inches up to 12 inches or more. Typically, the larger the dredger size, the greater the flow rate it can achieve, the larger the rocks that can be transported, and the quicker the removal. Flow excavators are normally made of steel, although one manufacturer uses titanium, and that's a lot lighter and easier to handle. So, simplistically, an excavator is used to suck material in one end and eject it out of the other. On the top is the motor. It's normally hydraulically driven, although there are some companies now have started to use electrically driven motors. So anyway, talk about hydraulic ones. Hydraulic fluids pumped at highest pressure down the umbilical and into the hydraulic motor, but the returning fluid routed back in a closed circuit. The pump shaft is directly connected to multi-stage rotors running the entire length of the assembly. And because the components are in line, it has a very efficient hydrodynamic flow. So seawater sucked into the intake and the turning rotors accelerate its flow. And then when the water flow gets to the end of the pump section, it's diverted both downwards and backwards in a gentle 180 degree arc into the ejector section. The water then enters a venturi, a venturi tubes like constriction where large volumes of incompressible water are suddenly forced through smaller diameter bores and this causes the flow through it to rapidly accelerate. As the water passes through the exhaust, it essentially pulls the flow of dredge water and any entrained sediment through the exhaust with it. The received wisdom with the keeping the flow linear would improve flow rates, but one manufacturer has introduced a helical element in front of the Venturi, and they say that this changes the flow pattern to give considerably more suction. Both the ejector at one end and the exhaust at the other can be connected to flexible hoses, and this means that the excavation operations can be carried out simply by moving the nozzle at the head rather than the entire dredger. Similarly, the ejected material can be placed as far as possible away from the site. But what happens if the whole thing gets blocked? Well, this happens if the amount of sediment entering the, the system temporarily exceeds the amount that can be passed through the exhaust. And a common practice is to reverse the flow, washing the debris out. Many systems have a sliding mechanism that engages a back flush valve. Now, the alternative is a water powered mechanism with no moving parts. Alternatively, it may be that the part of the operation actually requires the water flow to blow rather than suck. And this too can be able, enabled by shutting the back flush valve, although, importantly, as this bypasses the venturi, the output flow is at pump pressure and not venturi flow pressure. The suction dredges are conventionally located on the right side of the ROV. And this is because on the left hand side there's a a grabber, but the right hand side, there's a more dexterous uh, ROV manipulator, and this is able to more accurately um, position the suction head around well heads or similar targets. If 
If you want to know more about Subsea Engineering, read UT2, the magazine of the Society for Underwater Technology. Next month, we're going to be launching UV2, which is going to be specifically about underwater vehicles. Now, you may have read in the news that Deep Ocean is winding down its UK operations. Now, Jim Pyra, who's the head of geotechnics there, has put together a really cool film. Have a happy Christmas, and I hope to speak to you in the new year.